Sandy Monroe is going to be here once again to talk about the big announcement by the largest battery cell maker, CATL or Cattle, that they will now be in business of essentially the only way to get your empty battery to full in just one minute. And we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss Sandy's future appearances, which are pretty much every week now on this channel moving forward. All right, before I bring Sandy in, a little bit of context on the topic that we're talking about. If you watch my weekly electric car news videos on Sundays, you know that Cattle just announced that they will be making swappable battery systems for a variety of car makers and then support that by building out their own network of battery swapping stations initially in china that will be able to swap an old battery for a new one in just one minute on top of that neo that operates hundreds of battery swapping stations in china successfully has just opened their very first one in europe and let me remind you once again that the only category that the electric cars are still losing to gas cars besides availability, is how fast you can refuel one. And this technology solves that and a few other problems. All right, you are now up to date. And as we go into our conversation, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Flow. Check out the Flow Home X5 and give your garage some sex appeal with its elegant design, sturdy 100% aluminum casing, and plenty of cord length. Get yours using our exclusive $150 discount in the description of this video and by new charge avoid fighting with your landlord about the electrical upgrades needed for your electric car charging just plug in your smart splitter by new charge at your current rental and take it with you when you move get yours today using the discount code in the description of this video you know we've talked about the solid state batteries that are maybe maybe not the holy, holy grail and uh, you know it the holy, holy grail might just be the ridiculous eight a thousand mile range and just charging at home but there is a technology out there um that does allow you to get a full battery 100 percent from zero to 100 percent you know in a really a minute now that uh catl the uh biggest uh battery cell supplier has entered that market not only for consumers but also for the manufacturers yeah. Uh, Neo has been doing it for a while. Hundreds of uh, battery swapping stations in China. Their first one just opened in Norway. I know you have not been a fan, but I thought maybe in the light of this, you know, we might revisit because it is a truly the only way to get a full battery from zero to 100 in one minute and shut everybody up who has been still making case for gas cars, being able to refuel much faster. What, what are your thoughts now? Okay, so um, Monroe um, uh, developed a car for club car, um, an electric uh, golf car. And, um, and in that car, we had battery swapping, that, that electric golf car. That electric golf car would uh, be out on the course at about 5.30 in the morning if you happen to live in Michigan because the sun comes up real early and stays around for a long time, doesn't go to, doesn't set until about nine o'clock. So if you have golf cars and at 5.30 they go out, they're electric, they go out and they ride around, um, you're gonna lose a lot of money because at lunchtime they're dead. And then they take hours, they used to take about an hour to get recharged. And so we made it so that you could swap the batteries out really quickly. That, that was a really big advantage for club car and, um, and the golf courses. Okay, let's fast forward to right now. If I take my, I've got two options when I, when I do uh, swap out the propane bottles on my, on my uh, uh, barbecue. Right, I have one where I can take my brand new spanking clean, beautiful container and give it to a guy and he'll give me back a rusted old piece of junk that, um, that looks like it's been to hell and back. And am I gonna be happy with that? Or am I gonna give it to the guy and say, fill her up and he takes 
five minutes to fill it up. Um, I take the five minutes. I don't want that other rusty old piece of junk that probably leaks propane and probably will pee away half of it um, through a bad seal. So I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> I think a lot of Americans are going to look at the idea of, hey, this is my car and I'm going to take it in and have somebody undo a bunch of bolts, disconnect it from the main power supply, plug in a new battery that I have no idea where it came from or how old it is or anything else, and then <clears throat> somehow I'm going to be happy with the outcome. And I think, I believe, not just think, but I believe that Americans are not going to be eager to jump into that sort of a scenario. And then we go one step further. Okay, there's a few stations for the NEOs that are out there. That's nice. How come, how come Elon didn't uh, do the, he had his battery swap stuff. He could make things happen faster than you could pump gas into a car. Why didn't he pursue that avenue? I think it's because what he did was a marketing study and what came back did not appeal to him. Either there's no money in it or it would be rejected by the buying public. So again, I get back to how often do uh, we worry about electric cars here at Monroe? We've got now an S, uh, sorry, a Plaid, um, uh, a 3, um, an ID4, um, the, uh, the Chinese one, the um, uh, Imperium. And then we have other, other, uh, sorry, other uh, EVs coming in here on a regular basis and that we, we look at and, and fool around with. The only time they go to a charging station is when we see how well or if they kind of work at the charging station. That's it. Um, and nobody here has ever had a problem. No one. And we're usually on a fairly tight schedule. And you got to remember, I don't like paying people to uh, stand around watching, watching a battery get charged um, or watching a grass grow for that matter. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan, but we never have to do it because we, we don't run out. We just, we just don't see it. I think it's a, a solution for a non-problem. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to, uh, back to what I mentioned before in that these are, these are problems that may have, been a, may have been a somebody's thought a long time ago, probably someone who doesn't have an electric vehicle. And, uh, and I really and truly don't believe that they've done good marketing studies because I don't see that as being something that an American is going to rush right out and go and do. So just to address maybe a few things that you mentioned, <clears throat> one, obviously the batteries that are going to be put into your car that you're going to be leasing uh, at those battery swap stations, you know, that actually there's an argument to be made that they are the ones that you want because they're properly maintained and they're not rusty. They, you know, they're the ones that you're getting and you don't have to worry about the battery degradation. It's no longer your problem. So that would be one thing that I, that I well, think let me would ask be... You this okay, let me ask this question. Um, how long will it take me to get to the battery swap station? Depends on where they're at. I mean, the more of them, yeah. the, you know, uh, but I'm assuming, well, I mean, in China, they build them just like with Tesla superchargers along all of the most important and common um, expressways and highways. The correct answer is how long is a piece of string? No one knows <laughs> because there's not enough data. But here's the thing. I believe, I truly believe that um, in order to make this happen, you'd have to have Neo swapping stations and you'd have to have Cattell swapping stations and you'd have to have BYD swapping stations and you'd have to have Ford, GM, Mercedes, BMW, all these swapping stations that means that the number of batteries you're going to need in order to make this work, you're going to have to have at least three or four to one, right? Because you're never going to get them charged up fast enough if you don't have an inventory. And if you look at the gas stations and you see, you know, one car, two cars, three cars, four cars, how are you going to make that work? I see a gigantic problem. So 
well, you know, don't forget when the uh, depleted battery is received by the battery swapping station, you know, it will take only what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to charge it up. So they're not going to be out of circulation for too long. But I, I, I think um, the, you know, what, what they've already done in China is, and in, in especially with this cattle deal, is they're trying to make everything a standard, right? Because if they're going to be providing it to different manufacturers, then there will be a standard. It's no longer going to be just a new thing. So I think that's why I thought cattle thing was significant. Again, I go back to what sort of what sort of inventory do I have to carry? So 20 minutes, it costs two minutes, two minutes to swap out a battery. In 20 minutes, I can swap out 10 batteries. And 10 batteries is a lot of um, that's that's a lot of battery space. And then I have to have one ready to go to be plugged into that next vehicle. So we're sitting in a line, waiting to get our new battery. Two minutes, and then the next one goes. Two minutes, and the next one goes. Two minutes, and guess what? If you have one battery station, and 10 people are ahead of you, it's 20 minutes. <laughs> Where's the savings? I mean, this is, this is, okay, so I spent a lot of time um, in machine tools. Queuing is a, is, a, is a term that's used to determine how quickly I'm going to be able to make product on a palletized conveyor, non-synchronous palletized conveyor. And basically, that's the same as cars independently pulling into a station. And I can guarantee you, everybody's going to want a new battery first thing in the morning. Everybody's going to want a new battery as, like at night. There'll be other times, maybe during the day at noon or something like that, they're going to want a new battery and they're all going to be standing in line and they're going to be waiting longer than 20 minutes in order to get, the, in order to get what they want. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I still think that it's much better, even if you had to plug into a 110 outlet at your home to charge it up overnight, you know, uh, I think it's going to be a better option. More people are going to want to do that than swap out a battery. Yeah, no, of course, for home use, uh, for sure. I, I think the battery swap is more for travel. But if I can make one more point on behalf of battery swap, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I think part of the reason um, a battery swap works in China is because you can actually not just swap your battery for another exactly same battery. Uh, and with cattle as well, you just swap, let's say, a big battery when you're driving home for a smaller battery. So you don't have to carry that 100 kilowatt hour battery when you're just going to be driving around town for the next three weeks. So your 100 uh, kilowatt hour battery, let's say, can be swapped out for 30 kilowatt hour battery. And I think that's actually maybe solving an issue of not carrying too much of a battery. Do you, do you see, do you think that there is a, some uh, reason, you know, there that, that, that might the bat, you know, make the battery swap attractive? No, because you're looking at city driving and... Um... City driving, it's a lot more economical to have a, an electric vehicle because you're not, you're not sitting there idling an engine. Um, you don't see as much degradation on your, on your car um, as you would um, if you're, you know, um, if, if, you, if, you're, if you're taking a long trip. So no, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand the rationale behind, I mean, oh, I'm gonna make my car lighter so I can go to the grocery store and back. Eh, I don't know. If I had that, if I only had to have a small battery, well, why did I buy a big one in the first place? Actually, see, it would be the other way yeah. around. You would buy a small battery. I mean, you lease it, so you pay a little bit. But when you go on a road trip, then you get a bigger one. Does that make more sense? Okay. All right. So, all right. So let's ask the big question. Um, Spring Festival is huge in China. Huge. And I'm going to go home. I'm going to drive to my parents' house. I live in Shanghai and they live in Shenzhen. So that's a long trip. I get in the line to swap out my little battery to get a big battery. How many other people are in that line? How long is a piece of string? Nobody knows. And here's the deal. You get in the line and you can barely see the end. If you've been to China, and I'm sure you have, you can, there's a lot of people there. A lot. And when you see a lot of cars, and I mean a ton of cars, then you know if you get into a scenario like this, 
somebody's going to have to have a gigantic inventory. And I just don't know where that inventory, and then I have to take my little battery out. It has to be put someplace. Okay, so the logistics on here just don't make any sense to me whatsoever. And I believe that that's why Tesla didn't go down that route and pretty much neither did anybody else. I think it's going to be some kind of a temporary flash in the pan, fashionable statement or something. But at the end of the day, I don't buy it. It ain't working. And then how do I pay for this thing? So the big battery goes in. What do I, what do I get charged for every one of those things? Because I, I mean, it's one thing to pump your own gas. In the olden days, somebody else used to pump the gas and the money that you paid the gas attendant um, included his salary. Now, you don't have that. So now somebody is going to have to do undo all those bolts, right? Take out the battery, roll it away, put it in the rack, drag in a new one, put it in and, and screw it back down. There's got to be costs associated with that. And I can tell you one thing that I've learned as an immigrant coming to the United States, Americans are cheap. <laughs> we don't, and I fit right in. <clears throat> we just don't like to spend money on anything that we can do ourselves. So I think that this may work in China, where that sort of thing is looked on as uh, the, the fashionable way to do things. And in Europe, where, you know, servants are, servants are kind of like, uh, uh, it, it's, it's kind of something you see all the time. But I don't think it's going to work in the United States. Well, I guess I couldn't convince Sandy this time around either. But that's why I love having him on this channel, right? There is no reason to have someone here if all I'm going to do is agree with him all day long. If you want to see more of Sandy, go ahead and subscribe to his channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Take it